Hello, and welcome to the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. I'm your host, Benjamin Douglas, and this is the show where each week I read a chapter from a different indie author. Thanks for joining me for today's reading. Hey, thanks for joining me today for the fourth episode of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. Today, I'll be reading from the work of Mark E. Cooper. Very excited for this. A little more science fiction. And then uh, I want to announce the next few weeks of authors because we're going to see some diversification of the genres that I read from here. We're going to have Evan Pickering, Joseph Lalo, Izzy Shows, and Alexa Kang all coming up. So a smattering of post-apocalyptic, a suisson of uh, steampunk, a dash of urban fantasy, and a little bit of historical fiction all coming up on the docket. So do keep listening. Um, It's going to be an exciting few weeks. All right. I first encountered Mark E. Cooper, as I first encounter so many of these indie authors, on K-boards, of course, <laughs> where he was posting about how uh, he hadn't put out a book in a few years, but he was still seeing success based off of his marketing and his promotional um, work. And this was sort of amid a flurry of the best thing you can ever do is to write book two and then write book three and write book four, which does seem to be Pretty good advice. It's definitely the conventional indie wisdom for building a following, building a fan base, increasing sales. Uh, But Mark E. Cooper, not that he was a dissenting voice, but he was just a voice from a different perspective at that time, a couple of years ago, when I first saw him on there. Of course, he is writing again, um, and he is continuing a number of successful series, including the series from which we'll read today, The Merkiari Wars. Very exciting. So I want to begin by reading Mark's Amazon author bio. Mark E. Cooper is the best-selling author of more than 15 novels, including the Merkiari War series, the Devon Chronicles series, the young adult novels of the Runegate cycle, and the paranormal thrillers of the Shifter Legacies series. He was born and still lives in a small town in the south of England, where he writes full-time, adding books to his favorite genres. He loves reading and writing about strong female characters, and can often be found listening to an audiobook while he types like a madman. His background is in mechanical engineering, where he spent over 30 years working for Ford. His hobbies include Shelby Cobras. He built a V12 version of the classic car with his best friend back in the early 90s. It still has pride of place in his garage. He maintains a website and blog, http colon slash slash www.markecooper.com, and https colon slash slash www.facebook.com slash Mark E. Cooper Books. All right, so there is his Amazon author bio. I do want to note, if you enjoy what you hear today, that Mark has a number of successful series, as he mentioned in his bio, and it seems as though all, or at least most of these, have a first in series free, which is pretty cool. Clever strategy, too, at the end of this book, which I've actually read in its entirety for my own pleasure, because as I said, I'm a fan of (laughs) sci-fi. At the end of this book, he's got a link to, um, it looks like a mailing list sign up, but it's very cleverly marketed. It says, sign up for your free um, starter library and start reading your library in minutes. Get my free books. And then he has four books, all under his author name. All for free, which I assume are um, mailing list magnets. Hard Duty, from which we'll read today. The God Decrees, from the Devon Chronicles. I'm sorry if that's Devon Chronicles. I haven't read that. The Way of the Wolf and Runegate, 
So you can get those all for free uh, if you sign up for his mailing list. And it looks like they're also free on Amazon. All right. Lastly, before I read from Mark, and by the way, Mark's a great guy, very uh, like everyone that I've contacted so far, quick response, said, yeah, go ahead, read, of course. Um, so thank you, Mark, for that. I just want to remind you that this reading does not come from the official audiobook. In fact, this will be painfully obvious today because Mark is an English author and I am an American narrator. <laughs> so I apologize if it sounds a little off because of that. If you're interested in the actual audiobooks of Mark's books, please do visit his Amazon author page and find links to those. Um, good. So without any further ado, on to today's reading. Hard Duty. The Mercari Wars, Book One, by Mark E. Cooper. Chapter One, Discovery. Aboard ASN Canada, Year 216 AST, Alliance Standard Time. Captain to the bridge! Captain Colgan turned over and slapped the intercom button. What is it, Francis? he said, still groggy from sleep and squinting at her in the glare of the comms screen. Lights one-third, he barked in annoyance, and his cabin brightened. Sorry to wake you, sir, Commander Groves said contritely, but the excitement Colgan heard in her voice did not diminish. We've picked up a transmission. He frowned at that. They were a long way from the core and even the border worlds were a distant memory out here. Only exploration vessels such as Canada herself dared venture into the deep this far. He sat up and began pulling on his uniform. Source? Mark has categorized it as an unknown sentience, sir. I've logged a possible first contact, Groves said for the log. But then she broke procedure and grinned. This is it, Chef. I can feel it. He understood her excitement, but kept his own voice neutral. I'm on my way. Continue first contact procedures and log everything to chip for immediate transmission. Better download what you have so far to a drone, just in case. Groves straightened her shoulders, gave a crisp nod, and cut the circuit. That had wiped the grin from her face, and well it should. The last time anything like this had happened, the Alliance had been embroiled in a war with the Merchiari that had nearly seen humanity exterminated. That could not be the case here. Merky transmissions would have been recognized instantly. Not only that, the ship would be at battle stations and running for home at max. That they weren't doing that was reassuring. Groves knew what she was doing, but what was to stop these transmissions coming from another murderously vicious species? Nothing. Colgan made his way to the bridge. By the time he reached it, he knew what he had to do. He racked his helmet beside his command station and took his seat. Anything further, Francis? Nothing yet, sir. Our course and speed are unchanged. We have a transmission from an unknown source bearing zero nine or zero by one three two degrees, approximately thirty light years out. Mark is coddling his computers while they chew on the data, but I doubt we'll know much for a few hours. Thirty lights. Maybe a day to get there. Not very far at all. He pursed his lips as he considered his options. Survey missions were considered hard-duty stations, since, by definition, 
ships and their crews were out of contact for prolonged periods. His orders left him a good deal of leeway because of that, but if he chose to go with his first impulse of abandoning their current survey in favor of investigating Mark's transmission, he had better be right about his reasons for doing so. He needed more data. What can you tell me, Mark? Well, sir, they're definitely not human, Lieutenant Ricks said, ignoring the laughter coming from Helm and Tactical. They're not Mercury either. That sobered everyone. The fear of meeting a Merky warship was very real, but it went with the territory. No one ever found anything by staying home. You've told me what they aren't. Now tell me what they are. Sorry, sir. My analysis is incomplete. I've isolated multiple sources, and they all seem clustered in the same region of space. At this range, it's difficult to tell, but I think they're mobile. Call me crazy, but I have a hunch what I'm receiving originates aboard a convoy of alien ships. Sorry, sir. That's the best I can do from here. I can't make heads nor tails of the language. It's a miracle we received anything at all. I'm getting mostly leakage. Colgan winced. Leakage was dangerous. Unsecured communications was one reason the Merki had found the colonies so quickly. Nowadays, where tight beam comms, TBC, couldn't be used, fold space drones were to eliminate leakage. TBC was secure, but it was limited to ships in close proximity. It was essentially a modulated laser pulse, like blinking flashlights at one another. Drones were different. Given enough time, their fold space drives had enough capacity to cross the human sector of the galaxy. They were slower than using courier ships, but where speed was not an issue, drones were the best way to keep Alliance worlds in contact with each other. He wished there was a faster way to inform HQ of Mark's discovery but they were too far out for speedy communication. The closest Alliance world to Canada's current location was Northcliffe. He doubted they had a courier ship on hand. If he sent the drone there, Northcliffe port control would simply re-upload the data to another drone and pass it up the line. No, it would be better to launch straight to HQ and damn the delay. He instinctively felt that the fewer people who handled Mark's data, the better. It would take a drone maybe five months to reach HQ, and that was pushing its drive to the max. Not really a good idea in this instance. Drive failure could leave the Admiralty ignorant of his intentions and whereabouts until he launched another drone with an update. I want a full diagnostic run on the drone, Colgan said. Make absolutely certain that its self-destruct is armed and functioning. Groves cocked her head in surprise. It was extremely unlikely for anyone to track and run down a fold space drone in flight. Theoretically, they could be intercepted, but Fleet had ensured that anyone tampering with one would get a nasty surprise. Yeah, like a nuke in the megaton range going off in his ship. It was locking the barn door after the horse had bolted as far as the Merchiari were concerned, but who knew who else might be listening? Who else indeed? He muttered under his breath. Diagnostic complete, Skipper, Lieutenant Ricks said. All systems normal. Self-destruct is in the green. In the green meant that the nuke was primed, but safe. It would become active and dangerous the moment it reached minimum safe distance from Canada after launch. 
Colgan swiveled his station forward again. Download everything to the drone. Ship's log to date as well. Set drive parameters to 80%. Updating the drone now. Destination? Destination Seoul. Alliance HQ. Lieutenant Ricks keyed the drone active with his command codes and programmed its computer. Destination set. Ready to launch, Skipper. Launch. Aye, sir, launching. Drone away. Drone has entered fold space. Very good. Colgan turned to the helm. Plot a course for me, Janus. We are going to have a look at these people, but I don't want a whisper of our presence to reach them. Clear? As Crystal Skip, the helmsman, Lieutenant Wesley, said. Very good. He waited for the course to be laid in, all the while wondering if he was about to go down in history or down in flames. Had Captain Tibbet wondered the same thing when he hailed the first Merkiari ship to enter the human sector of the galaxy? Somehow, he thought he probably had. And we all know how that went. Please, God, don't let me be responsible for another war. Course laid in, Skipper. Fold space drive is hot. Execute, Colgan said, without the tremor in his voice he felt must surely be there. Executing. This concludes another episode of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. Thanks for joining me, your host, Benjamin Douglas, for another indie author reading. If you liked what you heard, be sure to visit http colon slash slash the book speaks podcast dot wordpress dot com for more episodes and for links to the author's website and the author's Amazon author page in the show notes. If you'd like to follow me on my own author journey, you can find me at http colon slash slash Benjamin Douglas Books dot wordpress dot com. And of course, if you're an indie author interested in having your work featured on the show, or if you're interested in discussing having your book read and produced by me as an audiobook, feel free to contact me at benjamindouglasbooks at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a productive and enjoyable weekend. <laughs>